Half a day students, I'm Josh Tenorio, your Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for being with us today and for taking the time to continue your learning with PBS University. I also wanna thank your teachers and support staff at DOE and PBS Guam for their work and their commitment to you, our students. Si dus maasi, and we hope that you enjoy this PBS University instruction. PBS University is a program by PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education in conjunction with public school teachers. These lessons are created to provide both parents and students with a unique educational experience while helping students to continue learning at home. PBS University, next on PBS Guam. One, two, three, four. Come along, let's sing a song. We'll have a great adventure. Today's the day. Learn and play, we'll have a great adventure. Numbers, letters, science things, all that we can do. Help you deal with how you feel, share with us too. It's super cool and just like school, yeah. our awesome learning adventures. So grab a friend, the fun will end, our awesome learning adventures. Awesome learning adventures with PBS University! Boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Learning with Mrs. Castro. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. I am truly honored. Today, I brought my handy dandy gift bag again, and we're gonna pull out some things to figure out what the theme of our episode is today. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. So the first thing I have is a a red ball. The second thing I have is a purple ball. The third thing I have is a yellow ball. And the fourth thing, can you guess it? Can you guess it? It's a blue ball. So what do all of these things have in common? They're all used for my daughter's ball pit, but they're also balls of different. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one, colors! <laughs> so today the theme of our episode is colors. We're gonna actually be making something really cool. We're gonna stack up different colors. And while we're stacking up different colors, we're also gonna learn how the different colors stack up on each other, but also the different things that need to be stacked up in an essay when we are writing together. So we are going to do some fun things today and I hope you come with me on this learning adventure. Let's go! Let's talk about essays. I don't really want to talk about a specific essay like descriptive, expository, or persuasive. I want to talk about how to write an essay. Almost all essays follow the basic format, which is five different parts. It's the introduction paragraph. That's where you're going to have your topic sentence and your hook. Then you have your body paragraphs. It's usually about three, at least three. And that's going to support your introduction paragraph. And then finally, it's your conclusion paragraph. That's where you're going to summarize everything that you said here and really send it off with an awesome concluding sentence. Alrighty, boys and girls. So let's see how we can stack different colors just like we stack different things in our essays. We have the introduction paragraph. You have your three body paragraphs, which is the information. And finally, our concluding paragraph. So before we start our experiment, let's try to do an example of an essay. Instead of writing an essay, we're gonna just do an outline, which is basically a skeleton of what you could write. So I want to do something like, why is Guam a great place to live? I would wanna write an essay about that. 
I would first do my introduction paragraph, and that's where I would also hook my reader with a cool statistic about Guam. Something that I think is fun and interesting is that it takes about only two hours to drive around the whole island of Guam. So I would hook my reader that way, and then I would end my introduction paragraph with a topic sentence. For example, Guam is an excellent place to live because the people are kind, the food is amazing, and the weather is always warm. So our topic sentence actually helps us to figure out what our body paragraphs are going to be. So my first body paragraph would be why, about why the people are so kind, and I would put information about how people are kind on Guam. The second body paragraph would be about the awesome food. Why is the food on Guam so amazing? And then my third body paragraph would be all about the weather, about how the weather is always warm, no matter what time of the year it is. And finally, I would conclude my essay with a concluding paragraph. I would basically summarize all the things that I talked about, about how the people are kind, why the food is so great, and why is the weather so warm and why I like that. And then I would just conclude it. I would just say, Guam is an awesome place to live because it allows me to be surrounded by amazing people. I have great food anytime, anywhere, and no matter what time of the year it is, it's always warm. So that's an example of how you can outline an essay. All you need are the five different portions. Your introduction paragraph, your three body paragraphs that support your topic sentence, and five, your amazing concluding paragraphs. I hope you try and write an essay too. Now let's go do our experiment. It's experiment time. You'll need a glass jar, a bowl of syringe, clear corn syrup, dish soap, honey, rubbing alcohol, food coloring, and olive oil. To start, you want to make sure you take your glass jar and place some honey in the middle of the jar. Try not to get it on the sides. Then you'll want to place your clear corn syrup mixed with the color of your choice. And the third layer is going to be your dish soap. And the fourth layer is regular water mixed with any food coloring that's not used yet. The fifth layer is your olive oil. And the final layer is rubbing alcohol mixed with any color that hasn't been used yet. You want to make sure you put it on the sides of the jar. And voila, a rainbow jar. Then you'll take your glass outside and admire the beautiful colored layers. Beautiful! All right, boys and girls, that concludes another awesome episode together. Thank you so much for being with me here today and for learning about the different parts of an essay. And we did some cool experiments when we stacked the colors on top of each other. And I just hope that you can remember that you can do hard things. If you don't like writing, just try it out. Just pick anything that you think is really cool and just try writing an essay. Because remember, you can do hard things and you are awesome. I am always rooting for you no matter where you are. And remember, practice makes progress. Thank you again and Xi Xi, which is also thank you in Chinese. I hope to see you in the next episode. Have an awesome day. Bye! Coliseum sporting event about to catch a battle between a lion and a gladiator. Hi, Isa. Here's your popcorn. Did I miss anything? Oh, good. Cornelius, you're here. They just began. It's such a treat to be here in Rome, sitting in the Coliseum, the world's largest amphitheater, one of the seven wonders of the world, with my very best friend in the whole world. Aww. <gasps> ah! Oh, that can't be good. How much do I owe you for the popcorn? Oh, I be coin. I be? Yes, Isa. We're in Rome. We count in ancient Roman numerals. Some people think that Roman numerals refer to hand gestures. See, one is I. Two is I I. Three is I I I. I I I. And four is IV. 
because it comes before five, which is B. Sounds cool. So, Cornelius, what is zero in Roman numerals? See, the thing is, there is no zero represented in Roman numerals. There are a lot of math flaws in the numbering system, which is the reason we don't use it anymore. There's a school bell. We don't want to be late for math. <laughs> okay, I'm done counting in Roman numerals. Let's head to the PBS University math class and learn about normal numbers. Right, let's go friends. Don't forget to check out PBS University on YouTube and hit like and subscribe. <gasps> Five hundred eighty-two. And uh, hey, hi. What is in half a day? Rananim ifa usum. That means how are you in Chukis? Ifa usum. Say it with me. Ifa usum. I hope you're doing great and ready for some math fun. Ite Mrs. Paulino here at PBS University's Math Corner, where everyone counts. By the way. What do you think the spelling book said to the math book? I know I can count on you. And I know I can count on you too. Yes, you, my mathematics apprentice. Well, I happen to have all these gazillion numbers for us to do today to examine and analyze with your help. Don't you love just seeing these numbers? What's even more fascinating are seeing these numbers in a different way. That's right, with a little splash of colors, we can easily provide a way to present data collected that are more visually comprehensible at a single glance. From this to this. Today, you and I will analyze and create different types of graph in color graph is a pictorial representation or a diagram that represents data or values in an organized manner. Here we have a mix of school supplies provided on your desk. Each type of item will be assigned to a particular color. Green for pencil, blue for your ruler or scale, yellow for pen, pink for sharpener, and purple for eraser. Then we count each supply and represent the data in colors within the table. Let's count. There are eight pencils, three rulers, two pens, five sharpeners, and four erasers. In a bar graph, the number of each of the supplies is represented with the height of the bars. There are also other types of graphs, such as the line graph, the pi or circle graph, and pictograph that are usually in colors. Let's examine these graphs, compare and contrast from the different U.S. territories in the Pacific. Now, what type of graph is this? That's right. This is known as a stack graph. Which Pacific Island territory seems to appear to be most racially diverse? In comparison with the other areas in the graph, Guam's population includes the greatest number of different ethnic origins and races. Now let's closely examine the graphs. There are more colors used to represent the different ethnicities in Guam. Now which island area saw the greatest change, including both increases and decreases in its population from 1990 to 2000? What about from 2000 to 2010. That's right. The Commonwealth of Northern Mariana Islands saw the greatest population change, a 60% increase from 1990 to 2000. From 2000 to 2010, it also saw the greatest change, an over 20% decrease. Now, what do you think could explain these population changes? Now, between the 1990 and 2000, we saw an increase of population during this time because many of the people moved there from other countries to work in the garment factories. 
Now, within the last couple of years of our coronavirus pandemic, we have seen many graphs shared with our people to help us understand what is happening and how we can respond. Here is an example. Now, what type of graph is this? That's right, it's a pie graph. From the PNC News report in October of 2020, the article title read, COVID cases among Chukis and Caucasians not in proportion to their populations on Guam. From this graph, it shows that the Chukis numbers, for instance, represent only 7% of the Guam population, but account for 14% of all COVID-19 cases on Guam so far. Caucasians also comprise of only 7% of the island's population, but account for 11% of the total COVID cases. One of the medical advisors, Dr. Annette David, however, stressed that these statistics have nothing to do with race. She said that there are many factors and variables that could be causing the ethnic groups to be at higher risk than the others. David said one factor may be that they work more in those essential businesses that expose them to the virus. And if they live in multifamily homes, that high density may be facilitating the transmission. With the data, our island was able to respond in different ways such as providing PPEs or the personal protective equipment, testing in different locations, promoting good hygiene, and doing outreach vaccinations in areas that were at high risk. What's well, your turn? You can create your own graph from a class survey to decide on your end of year celebration. Either a pizza party, a field trip to watch a movie, or a beach party. Well, I think that will be a great and fun task for you and your classmates to do. Or, you can figure out the ethnic groups among your social media friends from Guam and other parts of the world. Each ethnicity can be represented by a specific color. Well, how many colors do you think you will have? Go and try it out. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, that's all the math fun we can do for now. Thank you for joining me today. Kiroso. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Make each day count because math counts, everyone counts, and so do you. Until next time, see you later. Adios! and girls, welcome to another episode with PBS University. Ang pangalan ko ay si Miss G's, your science whiz teacher. In Tagalog, when we introduce ourselves, we say, Ang pangalan ko ay si Mary. Today is a really special day for me because I'm eating my favorite colors. I love the color red, and my favorite is also green. Do you have a favorite color? Let me hear it. Nice! Those are such pretty colors too. Do you know where you can see all the colors in one place? That's right! A rainbow! Have you ever touched a rainbow? Well, I have, but I used a prism. After our lesson today, I will show you how I touched the rainbow using this prism. In today's lesson, I will help you understand how your eyes and brain see colors. When you see a red shiny apple, the red you see is just how your brain understands the light bouncing off of it. Your brain gets information about colors from a place at the back of your eye called the retina.
The retina has two kinds of parts inside it that help you see. Rods, which are mostly for seeing when it's dark, and cones, which sees colors. When the light in the room shines on the apple, some of it bounces off toward your eyes. And then, the millions of cones in your retina get to work. There are three types of cones. Some cones that look for reddish colors, some that look for greenish colors, and some that look for bluish colors. When you look at a red apple, it makes the cones that like red get excited. When the cones get excited, they send a message to your brain, kind of like a secret code. The code from your cone says, these are the colors I saw. So let's review. Most humans can see all the colors pretty easily using all three types of cones in our eyes. The red cone, the green cone, and the blue cone. The cones are located in the back of our eyes called the retina. So now that we understand how our brain sees colors, do you want to know how I touched the rainbow? Well, with my handy dandy prism, I can simply look directly in here, this way, or that way, and simply touch the rainbow that I see inside the prism. Wow, isn't the colors we see on the rainbow pretty neat? So what colors did you see when I used the prism? Did you see yellow? Orange? Blue? Green? Red? In all, there are seven colors that make up the rainbow, and you can remember it using the mnemonics Roy G. Biv. Each letter stands for the colors of the rainbow. R stands for red. O, orange. Y, yellow. G, green. B, blue, I, indigo, and V, violet. Well, that was so much fun with you, boys and girls. I hope you learned a lot about the colors of life. And don't forget, like Einstein says, never stop questioning and stay curious. Bye-bye. What is it, half a day, kids? It's your fifth through eighth grade social studies teacher, Tony Walker II, back with another riveting lesson here at PBS University. It is so great to see each and every one of you once again. Say, I have a question for all of you. Oa my oi. What's that? You don't know what I just said to you? Well, that was actually a Samoan phrase that means, how are you? Here, you give it a try now. Oa my oi. Oa my oi. Oa my oi. Very good. Now, to answer the question, I'm doing pretty well. In fact, you could say I'm feeling the opposite of blue. <laughs> oh, speaking of the color blue, for today's lesson, kids, we're going to be talking all 
things colors. I'm going to briefly talk about the history of the first colors used by early man, as well as the meaning of colors on certain symbols, such as the American flag, and of course, our beloved flag of Guam. So, let's get started and learn about some colors. Now, colors have existed since the dawn of time. But the use of colors in paintings and drawings date all the way back to the dawn of early man, where cavemen would use various colors to paint pictures of wild animals that they hunted themselves or their daily lives. And you can still see these cave paintings to this very day if you visit some countries that have preserved their natural state or through images and pictures that you can find online or in your very own social studies textbook. I'm sure many of you have seen a few here and there. But unlike us, they weren't able to go to their local Payless to buy color pencils, crayons, or paint. They had to create the colors themselves. Which begs the question, how in the world did they create these colors? Well. But it's simply, they used the things that were around them. So what things around them did they use to create the colors that we see on these cave walls? Well, they used a multitude of things, including animal fat, dirt, chalk, and burnt charcoal. They would mix all of these elements together to create the basic palette of the first five colors, which were red, yellow, brown, black, and white. And those were the colors that early men used to do their cave paintings. But colors are not just pretty things for us to admire and look at. They can also have deep symbolic meaning behind them. A perfect example of this are the colors used in the many flags of the nations of the world, including the nation that we are a part of, the United States of America. Now look closely, kids. How many colors do you see on the American flag? That's right. There are three main colors on the American flag. Red, white, and blue. But what do each of these colors symbolize? Well, let's start with the red. The red on the flag symbolizes the blood of the American people as well as valor and hardiness. The white on the flag symbolizes the spirit of the American people, as well as innocence and purity. And finally, the blue on the flag represents perseverance and justice. Each of these represent the value of the American people. By the way, fun fact. How many stripes do you see on the American flag? That's right, there are 13 stripes on the American flag, which represents the 13 original colonies that made up the United States. And now let's switch flags and talk about one that's near and dear to our hearts. And that, of course, is the Guam flag. Now, what could the colors on the Guam flag symbolize? Well, let's start with the most notable and the biggest color on the flag, blue. What could blue symbolize on the Guam flag? That's correct. It actually symbolizes the very ocean that surrounds Guam, the Pacific Ocean. But what about the red? What does the red symbolize on the flag? Well, it actually symbolizes the blood of the Chamor people and the struggle that the people of Guam had to endure over many centuries. Another interesting fact is that the red in the flag, the red bars, were actually added to the flag by the United States. Mm. So kids, what did we learn today in Mr. Watley's class? Mm. Well, we learned about the first colors used by early man, what they were used for, and what they were made out of, as well as the meaning of colors on the American flag and our very own Guam flag. And that, kids, will conclude today's social studies lesson here at PBS University. And always remember, kids, if it happened, 
it's history. So till our next historical moment, I'm Tony Wally II, and I'll see you at our next lesson. Take care, kids. Have a wonderful day. This is the Thrive in Five Corner with me, Safety Agent Castro, where in just five minutes, you're gonna learn five helpful tips to seeing a beautiful future ahead of you. So welcome, run on in to my Chukis friends. You wanna know how to make your future so bright? With these special blue light glasses. Yes, they're going to be the main focus on our secret mission I'm gonna take you on. Get it, main focus? I received the TI-5 Top Secret Document in this case. Let's open it up, shall we, and investigate. For your eyes only, mission, Operation Blue Light. A dangerous light has been affecting the sight of teens around the world. We must find a way to protect their eyesight. Wait for instructions. Your mission is to save the eyesight of those teens. Enclosed in this suitcase are photos with distinct colors and prints. We have to find out the source to help solve the blue light mystery. Our TI5 Corner database has uncovered from a source, kidshealth.org. Light from electronic screens comes in all colors, but the blues are the worst. The light from a phone or laptop confuses the brain into thinking it's time to wake up instead of fall asleep. Blue light fools the brain into thinking it's daytime, and when that happens, the body stops releasing a sleep hormone called melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone we produce to help us fall asleep. The body starts releasing it a couple of hours before bedtime. Darkness helps trigger the release of melatonin, but blue light interferes and delays the process. Breaking news, it's worse than we thought. Teens are more sensitive to the effects of blue light than adults are. There's been reports of tossing and turning past bedtime. It's getting harder to sleep thinking about homework, your last selfie, or post on social media, and then it feels like you already have to get up for school. You found a solution? Yeah, you can dim their screens or wear special glasses. Is there evidence that this works? Let's look at the database. There's not enough research out there, but it doesn't help to try. Let's get to work or the teens all over the world will be out of sight. And I don't mean that as a 70s compliment. Out of sight? By blue light? Oh no! What's that you say? The photos will give us a clue on blue light safety? You're so smart. Can you identify the source of these pics? Blue pic number one. Camera, calculator, or phone. Red pick number two. Painting, playing cards, or bed sheet. White pick number three. A pet puppy, a doll, or a teddy bear. Brown pick number four. A snake, a snack, or a rubber band. And green pick number five. Is it a curtain, plant, or TV screen? Let's see if you're able to use these picture clues to solve the blue light mystery. So pick number one, what could that be? Well, it really is a high-tech device, isn't it? it? Has so many apps and it's a phone of all things. Yes, that's it, use it. Instead of texting, call a friend. Hey, what's up? What's up? Pick number two playing cards. Oh yeah, there are so many games you can play with these cards. You can have a fun game with family, and those are the real kinds of games. Pick number three, 
A pet? What do you got to do with it? Play with it. You both need to burn the large amounts of energy young people have. Pick number four. That's a rubber band. What does this thing do? It stretches. You're right. It stretches. So you can do some stretching and breathing exercise to help you wind down. It's good to meditate. When you meditate, you can think about things in a calm manner, make wise decisions, rather than let everything or thought stress you out. Pick number five is a plant. Put one or two in your room. Plants release oxygen, and having one in your room can help improve sleep. The best kinds of plants to keep are succulents. They are easy to take care of, just require sprays of water. They're also known as oxygen plants, and it adds oxygen to your room at night. Let the eye be at its best when you put the blue light to rest. Blue light can come from different electronic devices, and it would be a healthy habit to keep your alerts on off when you go to sleep. It makes more sense to get alerts in the morning when you're the most alert. all the happy smiling and healthy looking teens when they put to good use the five helpful tips let's do a recap how can blue light and eye safety help you to thrive in five steps well we can use those amplified pictures to help us answer the question number one did you guess what it was yes it was the phone reach out and touch someone with your voice number two playing cards correct have some relaxing family fun. Number three are pets, yes! Because pets are part of the family too and they need love and a little goes a long way. Number four is to stretch. Yes, that was a rubber band. So stretch those muscles and stretch to give your body some brain feeding oxygen. Number five, did you guess it? Yes, it's a plant because we give it carbon dioxide and it gives us back oxygen so that we can have a full night of restful sleep. This has been a Thrive in Five Corner with me, Safety Agent Castro, and you have been promoted to Safety Agent as well. I'm signing out, but always remember to vibe, jive, and strive. Half a day PBS University friends and mahalo! Welcome to Chamorro Time with me, Senora Max. Mahalo means thank you in Hawaiian. Can you say mahalo, friends? Malik Pamagun, how do you say thank you in your language, friends? Wow, that is so beautiful. Thanks for sharing. I remember when I met my very first Hawaiian friend. She was so friendly. She needed help one day in class and I was there to help her. She was so grateful, friends. She was so grateful. The next day, she brought me a Spam Musubi. Do you love Spam Musubi, friends? Awesome. I love Spam Musubi. It was so amazing. And now, every time I see the Spam Musubi, I think of my friend. Do you think of your friends like that? I know it sounds so funny, but I'm totally grateful for her because that was my first time trying Spam Musubi. In our previous lesson, we learned how to sing a song with a simple conversation. Do you remember what it is, friends? What? You want to sing it again? Hold on, let me go and get my guitar. 
All right, Femme Gun, I got my guitar. Let's go ahead and begin. Ready? Awesome job, PBS University friends. Today, we're going to have some fun. Why? Ask me why. Because we're going to learn a dance to go with our song. Are you excited? Me too. Before we get started, we need to make sure we learn some cool words that we are going to do in our dance. Kolistu Hamsu, are you ready? Here are our words. We have Pakpaki. We have Tansu Motna. And we have Tansu Tati. Pakpaki, Tansu Motna, and Tansu Tati. All right, let's get ready. Our first word is Pakpaki. Pakpaki. Can you say Pakpaki from a gun? Malik Famagun, Pakpaki means to clap. Your turn, Famagun. Can you Pakpaki? Malik. Who do you Pakpaki for, Famagun? Our next word is Tansu Motna. Tansu Motna. Your turn, Famagun. Can you say Tansu Motna? Malik Pamagun, Tansu Motna means point forward or point in front of you. Malik Pamagun, what things can you point to that is in front of you? Awesome, Malik! Our last word Pamagun is Tansu Tati. Tansu Tati. Your turn, Famagun. Can you say Tansu Tati? Awesome job, Famagun. Tansu Tati means to point back. Point back. Malik, Famagun. You look like you're ready to get your dance on. Come on, let's go. Let's go outside and I will show you. Come on. All right, Pamagun, here we go. I'm going to play the song with the medley from our very own Johnny Sablan and Hop a Day, and you're going to follow me with the dance. Are you ready? Uno, dos, tres, pagu. Hop a day, hop a tata manu Hop a day, toru malikatu. Hop a day, hop a day. We're gonna try this again, Papa Gun. Get ready. Hop a day, hop a tata manu ha. Hop a day, toru malikatu. Hop a day, hop a day. Hop a hop a. Awesome dancing, Famagun, and mahalo for joining me. Way to go, friends. Let's review the words that we just learned, Famagun. Our first word was clap, 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 clap. clap. What does that mean, Famagun? That's right, Pakpaki. Very good. Our second word was point forward or point in front of you. What does that mean, Famagun? Malik, that's right, Tansu Motna. And our last word was to point back. 
point backwards. What does that mean, Famagun? Maulik Tansu Tati. Maulik Famagun. Awesome job, PBS University friends. Now I hope you can take this song and this dance and teach any one of your friends that you may come across. It's so much fun, wasn't it? It was so fun joining with you guys. Again, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Si tsu is maasi. Remember, hasu met good how. You are strong. Si tsu is maasi for joining me in tomorrow time, tomorrow time. Until next time. Adios.